All right, guys, how are you guys doing today? Um, today we are going to be covering changes in aggregate demand and aggregate supply, the ADAS model uh, in the short run. So um, again, remember the shifters for, uh, well, when we go over the shifters for aggregate demand, aggregate supply, talk a little bit about stagflation, uh, cause, uh, review a little bit um, about cost uh, or causes of inflation. And then um, also I have two uh, FRQs that are PDFs. We're gonna go over those. I'm gonna uh, have you guys work on those. I'm gonna answer them here on the whiteboard. And then um, if you guys have any questions about those FRQs, we'll go over those as well. So um, after that, we will uh, go over uh, the long run self adjustments um, where we talk about, you know, again, differences between long and short run. Uh, we look at uh, the ADAS model uh, compared to the business cycle. Um, <clears throat> and then again, those uh, two, we look at some economic growth and then uh, those two FRQs. And uh, that should be it for, for us today. Um, now, um, if you have a question or you're just not in my class, but you're, you're visiting to, or you're watching this, Please leave comments with questions or if there's something that uh, maybe you need me to clarify, I can go ahead and uh, clarify that for you guys. So I can see that there's a few people already on or watching this live, of course. So uh, if you just let me know who's who, who's here, that way, you know, um, I can. Um, all right, you guys ready to begin? Yeah. All right. So uh, again, changes in the uh, ADAS model. Um, we have talked already about um, what the ADAS model is. Okay. Uh, we'll be covering uh, topic uh, 3.6 right today. Um, so uh, remember that an ADAS model looks like this. Okay. We got real GDP. Price levels, you got a downward sloping aggregate demand curve, upward sloping aggregate supply curve, and then a long run aggregate supply. Price level equilibrium. Okay. From my earlier videos, we covered this graph here, right? You can see here on the uh, vertical axis, this is price level. Uh, for the AP test, you need to make sure that that is what's included or what's on um, what you write. You cannot just write P. Uh, explained that in an earlier video, and that's, again, because uh, if you put P, then it's the assumption that this is going to be a, a supply and demand graph, right? So you just need to have price level. Um, here we have our price level equilibrium point. We have uh, Q sub Y, which shows us full employment, right? You have your long run aggregate supply curve, you have your aggregate demand curve, and you have your aggregate supply curve. And then, of course, on our horizontal axis, we have it labeled R GDP, meaning real GDP, right? So <clears throat> that's our aggregate supply curve. Um, so our shifters, again, for aggregate supply are going to be a change in consumer spending, a change in investment spending, a change in government spending and uh, net export spending, right? Um, so shifters for uh, aggregate supply, you can remember that using RAP. Uh, that's gonna be a change in resource prices, change in actions of the government, um, and a change in productivity. Okay, so let's uh, use the example of a supply shock, right? If there's a negative supply shock of oil, what's going to happen to our ADAS model? Well, um, first we need to identify what's going to shift and then, and then we can see what happens to price level and output. So if we have a negative supply shock, that is going to be a uh, change in, um, in aggregate supply. That'll be a change in resource prices, right? So, um, because of that, you would shift your aggregate supply curve. Now shifting a negative supply shock is going to shift your aggregate supply curve to the left, right? So shifting your aggregate supply curve here to the left, right? Make sure that you indicate that this is the second aggregate supply curve and you have this little arrow indicating that it's shifted to the left, right? Um, 
So what happens to price levels? Well, price levels. Well, price levels increase, right? And output decreases, right? So that's a phenomenon in the economy, or this kind of uh, not a phenomenon, but a I'm sorry, a uh, situation in the economy which we call the uh, which we call stagflation. So you have a stagnant, um, stagnant economy, but you have inflation, right? You have price levels raising, but you have nothing. You're not producing as much, right? So uh, this would be considered a recessionary gap, right? Again, this is called stagflation, where you have um, high price levels and you're not producing as much stuff. So, all right. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and now uh, let's go through another example for our ADAS model. Let's assume that um, let's assume that there's an increase in consumer spending. So what happens to price level and output in the short run, okay? So go ahead and draw out your ADAS model in your notes, and then shift what would shift consumer spending, what curve would shift, right? And then let's see what happens. Okay, so real quick, you should have on your paper just right now, if you just want to do kind of a spot check real quick, you should have price level on the horizontal, I'm sorry, the vertical axis. You should have price level equilibrium. You should have your uh, your uh, quantity equilibrium or your full employment point right here. You have the real GDP labeled. Then you have your long run aggregate supply curve, which is that horizontal, uh, that vertical curve. And then you have your um, downward sloping aggregate demand curve and your upward sloping aggregate aggregate supply curve. Now, <clears throat> so what do we do next with this? Um, I said the example was what would um, what would happen if there was an increase in consumer spending? Well, if there's an increase in consumer spending, you're going to shift the aggregate demand curve, right? So again, you would need to show the shift, right? And then um, make sure that you've labeled, right? You have your first aggregate demand curve and your second aggregate demand curve. Now, let's see what happens to price levels, right? And to real GDP. So price levels have what? They have increased, right? So you'll see an increase right here. And then you'll see an increase here of uh, real GDP real GDP. So if you can increase your consumer spending, what's going to happen is price levels will go up, right? And of course, uh, real GDP should go up, right? Okay. Um, now, there are two reasons for inflation. Um, one is demand pool inflation, right? This is going to cause uh, aggregate demand to increase. So you see a shift in aggregate demand, right? Um, and that again is, um, that's going to pull prices up. And why does that happen is because consumers start to be competitive, right? With each other, like think of eBay, um, driving price levels up, right? So if someone's willing to pay a little bit more for the same product, then the seller is obviously going to sell it to whoever's going to pay more for it, right? So, um, that's uh, demand pull inflation. Now, cost push inflation is going to be a decrease in the short run aggregate supply curve. And so um, that means higher production costs increase uh, prices. So um, think of negative supply shocks, think of things that uh, happen that are going to possibly raise the production of that product, right? Okay. Um, and then those are the two ways essentially that cause inflation. Now, uh, of course, there's, you know, hyperinflation that's caused by um, just producing or printing too much money, right? And uh, we've talked about hyperinflation already, so um, I won't over, overdo it. Um, again, uh, you should have on your, uh, in the comments, um, there should be two um, PDFs. 
if you guys can just go ahead and open those up and just kind of minimize them for right now, because we're going to open those up. I'm going to, we're going to work on those together. It's a two FRQs, one from 2012 and one from 2006. Okay. What I'm going to go ahead and do now is we're going to go ahead and move on to uh, long run self adjustment. So if you have my notes, right, go ahead and switch over, or open up 3.7 so that you guys can be following along. Cool. Gio, how are you doing? And then uh, Marissa, how are you guys doing? Thank you guys for putting the comments in. The rest of you guys, if you guys could just put in comments of who's here, that way I know who's uh, who's out there. If you guys have missed anything from uh, my class, just go back to the previous uh, last week. Uh, I put out three videos. So if some of this stuff is uh, <laughs> kind of new to you or different, uh, we've moved on quite a bit for the from last week to to this week. So uh, a little bit of catching up that you guys will need to do. Not that big of a deal. Um, again. You guys can always email me if you have questions um, or reach out to me uh, with the Remind app. Cool. Um, again, if there's any questions or anything that pops up, feel free to, to comment. That way I can uh, can uh, answer those questions for you guys. All right. So, uh, Danny, how you doing, man? I hope things are going good with you, brother. All right. So let's see. Uh, long run self-adjustment. Um, now, again, um, there's two, two differences uh, when we're talking about aggregate supply, right? There is the long run and then there is the short run, okay? And uh, if we're looking at our graph, right, this is our long run aggregate supply curve. That's going to be a vertical curve. Our short run aggregate supply curve, or just AS, is going to be a upward sloping curve, okay? Now, uh, in the short run, don't ever think of these two things as a time, they're, they're time variables, right? No, that's not, that's not what it is. It is um, in the short run, wages and resource prices are sticky and will not change when price levels increase. So that means that by sticky, it means a slow moving, right? So um, price level or wages and resource prices will be slow to move in the short run, right? In the long run, Okay, um, you're able to kind of change a lot of the variables. So wages and resource prices are now flexible, right? And will change when price levels change, right? So um, those are the two differences between short and long run. Okay, uh, I gave an example last uh, last video where you know just making desks and uh, man hours. So um, you know if you need to go back to to watch that one just to kind of to see the the example that I used uh, used it on Friday. So. Um, all right, so now uh, if consumer increases, what will happen um, in the short run and then what's going to happen in the long run, okay? Remember, they, if at first, in the short run, wages and resource prices are not flexible, right? So um, they will not change, right? Or they're slow to change. So um, we see here, right? That when we increase consumer spending, right, that we get an um, an increase in aggregate demand, right, and so price levels have increased, but wages and um, the variable costs have, or I'm sorry, the uh, wages and uh, resource resource prices have uh, not changed yet, right. Well, what happens when the when we get into the long run? Well, when we get into the long run our resource prices and wages will increase, right? So uh, if you increase wages and resource your resource prices, that's a uh, shifter for, uh, for uh, aggregate supply. So increasing those will shift your aggregate supply curve to that. So now we get a shift of aggregate supply. What ends up happening? Is now price levels. I'm going to move this real quick.
price levels have now increased back up to, or have increased, but we are in, our output has decreased, right? Now, <clears throat> when we look at this happening, right? We can go back to our business cycle and look at our business cycle. and see those things happening too, right? So first we're here, right? And let's say that uh, consumer spending increases. Well, we get up to a peak, right? And then um, what's gonna happen in the long run? So this is again, movement to the short run. And then in the long run, well, wages and prices uh, get adjusted, right? I'm sorry, wages and uh, resource prices adjust. And so um, we're back in to long run. And so now we're back at full employment, right? So yes, we're producing more GDP at this output here, but um, when everything adjusts, we go back down to uh, the output from before, okay? So in the long run, what eventually happens is that wages and cost will, uh, will increase, okay? <clears throat> now, if consumer spending, what will happen if, um, we already looked at that. If, uh, consumer spending decreases. What will happen in the short run and what's going to happen in the long run? So what I want you guys to do right now is just go ahead and draw an ADAS model, right? Um, and what I want to see, or well, I obviously can't see it, right? But <laughs> what I want you guys to do is shift what you think is going to shift if we decrease uh, consumer spending, right? So consumer spending is going to decrease. While you guys do that, I'm going to draw out the ADAS model. Okay. All right. So Let's see here. So uh, we have our ADAS model, right? And then from uh, what we should be doing is seeing a decrease in consumer spending. Again, uh, you know, just to, to make sure that we understand this, right? Um, not sure if there's a glare there or not for you guys, but um, um, on our vertical axis, you'll have price levels you'll have price level equilibrium on our horizontal axis. You're going to have real GDP. You'll have uh, Q sub Y, Q sub Y meaning full employment. Uh, you have your long run uh, vertical curve, uh, your LRAS, right? Long run aggregate supply. Then you're going to have your aggregate supply curve, right? And the short run. And then you're gonna have your um, aggregate demand curve. So <clears throat> um, remember that aggregates, um, Demand, uh, the shifter for would be, we would shift aggregate demand because it's consumer spending. That's a decrease in consumer spending. So decrease in consumer spending, we're going to see the aggregate demand curve shift to the left, right? And we see that what happens, right? Is that price levels decrease, right? price levels decrease. And then since price levels decrease, output decreases as well, right? So we're not making as much stuff. And then since we're not making as much stuff, people are not buying as much stuff, right? So they need to lower our prices get lowered, right? So 
<clears throat> um, so then what's going to happen um, in the long run? Well, in the long run, um, if price levels are lowered, right? Um, well, what's going to happen in the long run? What's going to happen in the long run is you're going to have aggregate supply shift to the right. Okay. And get back to long run equilibrium. All right. And so um, in the long run, wages and uh, costs will eventually decrease, meaning that if price levels decrease, right, and output decreases, then uh, bosses are going to lay off their employees, they're going to start letting their employees go because they don't need to produce as much. And because of that, um, then paying their employees less, um, they're going to... Um, they'll lower uh, again, the prices would lower again, right? And so what does this look like on the business cycle, right? Okay. So on our business cycle, we are currently here at the full employment point where we first start off, right? And then people stop, you know, consumer spending decreases. So we go down to a trough. And then um, as price levels get lowered and wages lower, we go back to full employment, right? So uh, we would just come right back up. Um, adjusting to the long run okay now <clears throat> okay let's uh go through some other examples right um all right let's say consumer um expectations fall and uh, consumer spending plummets, what will happen to uh, price levels and what's going to happen in the long run. All right. So um, let's go ahead and again, draw an ADAS model. And I want you to see, or I want you guys to see um, what happens again, if consumer expectations fall and then um, consumer spending plummets, right? What's going to happen to uh, price levels and to output uh output in the long run. So go ahead and start drawing your ADAS models and start moving that around for me. Well, what's going to first happen, right, is our AD curve is going to shift to the left, right? Price level one, right? And then um, wages and uh, resource prices will um, adjust. And since wages and resource prices will adjust, our aggregate supply curve is then going to increase, right? Shifting to the right. And so that would further bring down price levels. Okay. Hopefully that's making sense to you guys. Um, uh, again, price levels would decrease, but our output is going to stay the same. Um, again, if you guys have a question or anything you want me to kind of cover, just make sure that you guys understand this stuff. Um, 
just uh, please leave a, a comment in the, uh, just leave a comment, please. Okay. All right. Now, uh, what I want you guys to do now is we're going to go over the FRQ. Um, so what I want you guys to do is let's go ahead and uh, look at that PDF. And you're going to be looking at 2006 um, FRQ question number one. You're going to only answer A, part A and part B of this question, okay? So it says, that assume that the country's economy is operating at less than full employment, okay? Tr uh, draw a correctly labeled um, ADAS model and show each of the following. Long run aggregate supply curve and then uh, current output and price levels. And then assume that policymakers take no action and that prices and wages are flexible explain what will happen to each of the following in the short run aggregate supply and in employment, okay? So I want you guys to take some time. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and give you guys about four minutes to answer each of these. If you guys have a question in the comments, just put something in the comments. That way, uh, you know, I have something, I'm not just, you guys are staring at me for four minutes, or if it takes you less time than four minutes, then let me know and that way I can go ahead and get started. But I'm gonna give you guys some time to, to answer that question. And then, um, what's up, Muriel? How you doing? Um, hope you guys are staying safe. Um, but go ahead and uh, again leave a leave a comment if you have a question about uh, this FRQ. Uh, we are doing FRQ two thousand six, question number one, and we're just only looking at question or er, parts A and B. Okay, uh, I'll give you guys about four minutes. Cool. Again, if you have a question, leave it in the comments. Visualizing reality, I have no idea who you are, man. <laughs> you guys do that. I'm going to go ahead and draw out the answer here. So draw this out, make sure that you guys are practicing drawing these graphs, make sure you guys are, are looking at this, right? Like, um, you know nothing, you at least we've gone over in the last few seconds or a few minutes, we've gone over an ADAS model. So you know, draw out an ADAS model, okay? Make sure everything on that ADAS model is, is labeled, right? Any questions so far? If you're done, you can hit that like button at the top. I know that that always helps out, right? Oh, 
also those of you guys in this class, make sure that you guys are letting other people know. Uh, we're try I try to reach out through Schoology, you know, and just let everybody know the to watch these. Um, doesn't seem like everybody's on right now, so uh, just kind of let people know if you guys can uh, share the word, pass the word along. That way, everybody's on here. Um, be really nice to get both uh, both my economics classes on here, so that way we we could really use these comments as more of like a discussion board um, with questions. I know you know. Uh, use that discussion board. Use the use the comments, guys. To ask questions because I know in class you guys have a lot more questions than uh, than what's on there right now. So uh, let's please use those. All right, you guys have two more minutes. Um, again, even if you have no idea what uh, what you're doing, you do know what an ADAS model is. So let's go ahead and make sure that we have that. Uh, at the bare minimum on your paper right now. Um, and if you haven't done this, then go get some paper and start drawing out an ADAS model. So. Does anybody need more time? You could go ahead and say something in the comments. If you guys need a little bit more time, I could give you guys a little more time or if you guys are ready to, to move on. All right, guys, let's go ahead and get started then. Um, all right, there you go, Marissa. Good, good job. All right. These aren't too difficult, or this one isn't too difficult. So let me let's first. It first tells you to draw and label um, an ADAS model, um, and uh, it wants you to uh, correctly label and draw the aggregate demand and aggregate supply for for each of the following. Uh, Let me just read that real quick to you guys. Uh, so uh, draw a correctly labeled ADAS model showing uh, each of the following. Uh, at the beginning, it says assume that a country's ec uh, economy is operating at less than full employment. Okay, So if an economy is operating at less than full employment, that means that it's in what is called a... Um, a recessionary, a recession, a recessionary uh, gap or a negative output gap, right? Meaning that you're going to be the, to the left of the long run aggregate supply curve, right? Because our long run aggregate supply curve, when your intersection point is on that, you are operating at full employment. If you're on, if your intersection point between the ADAS or the AD and uh, the AD and the AS uh, curves is to the right of that, that means you're operating above full employment or you're at a positive output gap. Okay. So um, we have our AS curve or AD curve. It wants you to have a long run aggregate supply curve, which we have right here. Um, we have our price level equilibrium and we have our output equilibrium or our GDP, right? And so <clears throat> that is uh, again at a negative output gap, right? Or a recessionary gap. And um, it's going to be, our intersection point is going to be the left because we are not at full employment like what the first part of the question states, right? Okay, so, um, the next part is so um that first part was worth right um if you're uh, concerned about that kind of stuff uh for the ap test right uh the first point is for uh correctly labeling the graph again correctly labeling the graph means that everything needs to be labeled and everything needs to be labeled correctly right price level price level equilibrium uh output output full employment lras as ad and real GDP. <clears throat> okay. Um, the next point is for um, a vertical log run aggregate supply curve at full employment, right? Uh, the next point is um, earned for showing that to the current output level and price level. So that would be your price level equilibrium or um, price level one, actually. So um, <clears throat> now uh, the next question or the next thing that we need to cover is assume that um, assume that policies maker, makers make no 
action or policy action, take no policy action, and that price levels and wages are flexible, right? Um, explain what will happen to each of the of the following. So um, what's going to happen, remember that the aggregate supply curve is uh, going to shift to the right, okay? Um, so you would see a shift to the right. You don't have to draw this out because it doesn't say to draw it out, but uh, you could have drawn that out, okay? I think you guys should do that. Nope. There you go. Um, because they're flexible, so we're going to move back to our long run aggregate supply curve, okay? And then um, the next point is um, is earned for explaining that uh, wages were decreased, lowering the cost of production. So what's going to happen is here, uh, since wages are flexible, right? Price levels are going to, or your wages will decrease causing the price levels, of course, to decrease, right? If you don't have to pay your workers as much, you don't have to price your goods as high. And since they're in the competitive market, you know, they're trying to sell goods for as cheaply as possible to, um, for you to purchase them. So um, your price levels would decrease. Um, and so um, aggregate supply would shift to the right. Uh, okay. And then next point is earn for uh, concluding that employment will increase. Well, how is employment going to increase? Well, it's pretty simple, right? If we are at this point right here, this is our output point, right? We are less than full employment. If we move to this curve, our long run aggregate supply, remember that it's assumed in long run aggregate supply, you're going to be producing at full employment. We are now at full employment. So um, we would be, by th these things happening, we would be at full employment. Um, okay. Then uh, one point is earned for explaining that uh, re real output is raising. So again, we can see that real output is raising. This is our real GDP on the horizontal axis. And since um, we're at this out point level here, Y sub one, moving to Y sub F, we are producing more, uh, whatever the difference is between these two is how much more we are producing, okay? Does that make sense? I hope so. If not, please ask a question in the comment section. That way I can go back and, uh, and uh, clarify some stuff. All right, so uh, economic growth. Um, anytime you talk about economic growth, it's when you're shifting the actual long run aggregate supply curve. And so but again, shifting the long run aggregate supply curve is gonna be changing quality or quantity of resources, right? Very similar to the PPC, and then change in technology, all right? And so let's go ahead and what I want you guys to do is draw an ADAS model, okay? And let's look at a change in the long run aggregate supply curve. Now, something we need also need to understand about um, the long run aggregate supply curve is um, it dealing with capital stock, right? And I'll get to that here in a second. So first, let's let's uh, let's do something. So, if investment were to increase, right? So that means that businesses are now buying more machineries, right? They're buying more trucks. They're buying more. Uh, fryers, they're buying better grills. So now they're able to produce things faster or better, right? So what's what's that going to change, right? Well, it's going to change first our aggregate um, demand curve, right? So we would see here we're at, um, we're at full employment right now. So what's going to happen is our aggregate demand curve will shift because investment has increased, right? 
Remember that investment is, an, is a shifter for aggregate uh, demand, okay? Now, <clears throat> what's up, Josh? How are you doing, man? So what happens here is that we get into an inflationary gap, right? An inflationary gap, and that's price levels have increased and output has increased as well, right? Since we're at this point right here. So since those two things have happened, um, since those two things have happened, um, we then have, uh, we're in an inflationary gap, right? And so um, what then happens is that remember, um, our aggregate supply curve is then going to um, also increase. And now price levels are back at uh, where there was original equilibrium. But since we have more uh, stuff to produce, our long run aggregate supply curve gets shifted out as well. And now we were back at equilibrium at the equilibrium point. And why is this? Why does this? Why do all these things happen? Well, because machinery and tools purchased by business are going to increase output, and so now you're producing more. And we have to show that they're producing more, so um, that pushes out our long run aggregate supply curve. So I hope that makes sense to you guys. I'm, maybe I didn't do the best of explaining that to you guys, but if you do have a question, please leave it in the comments. That way I can uh, I can address those, okay? All right. So next, what I want you guys to do, we've got a few more minutes left. What I want you guys to do is let's go ahead and open up the next PDF, which is uh, the 20, 20, uh, 2012 FRQs. And uh, let's go ahead and complete question number three. I need you guys to do question A, um, B, C, and D. What's up, Zara? How you doing? Hope you guys are all staying safe. You know, I know trying to the social distancing stuff and staying at home is uh, is boring, but uh, we just got to try to protect ourselves and protect our family members as best we can. Um, I know it's a little tough, but um, trying to do the best we can too. You know, I know you guys need to are eager to to learn all this economic stuff. So. <laughs> um, Again, what you guys should do is uh, go to the, the description, right? You'll find the uh, the two FRQs. You'll, we've already covered 2006. Uh, so right now we're going to cover 2012, uh, question number three. And so you need to do all parts for question number three for Anderson land. And so I'm going to give you some time to complete, uh, complete that. So... Uh, yeah, Zara, I, I don't know how long this is going to last. I, I imagine this is going to be the rest of our semester, right? So, uh, yes, this is how we are going to, to conduct class for the, uh, for the rest of the year. Um, if the, for some reason, like, I mean, everybody's schedules, you know, is different, right? So like, um, I might not be able to do them live all the time, but you know, you guys know, I have two kids, um, uh, my daughter and my son, um, two little ones. And, um, so uh, maybe I might not be able to do it. I maybe I have to pre-record it, whatever. So whatever the case may be, um, you know, they'll be on the, in the playlist. Um, it's not every day at two. I do them on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays for you guys. All right, let me go ahead and, while you guys are working this out, Uh, while you guys are working this out, um, I'm going to go ahead and draw this out and then, uh, yeah. Oh, Josh, the attendance quizzes. Yeah. So, I mean, this is kind of silly, right? But the school wants us to somehow take attendance, right? Um, which fine, whatever, that's what we need to do. Um, so since that's the case, what, uh, I did is I, I made an attendance quizzes, which is on Friday. And then, so that's kind of a, 
hey, did you watch the videos? Did you do everything that you needed to do? Um, so, you know, there's only one answer, right? So you just open those up, you answer those, and that, that gives you attendance for the week. Um, if I don't see that you're answering those, then that, you know, gives me like, hey, maybe I should call that person, let them know that, uh, that I, I, you know, that they need to be doing this stuff. Um, and then there'll be module quizzes, right? Uh, that you guys will be taking in class, um, for, um, the module quizzes will be taken for, uh, for grades, right? Cause we still have to do grades and stuff like that. And then, um, we probably won't do multiple choice tests, uh, just because the, uh, so some of you guys are going to be taking the AP test, uh, probably be better to, uh, practice you guys, uh, practicing the, uh, FRQ. So I'll probably just give you guys some FRQs to do. Uh, to complete and then turn in um, for uh, for a grade, right? So that's the deal with attendance. Uh, just saw that a few guys had just jumped on in the comments. You guys can see the uh, 2012 FRQ question. Uh, go ahead and um, open that up, and uh, from there, um, start in your notes. Start answering that question, right? Again, bare minimum, <laughs> just kind of lost as can be. Uh, best you can do is, I mean, we've already covered an ADAS model, draw out an ADAS model, right? Have something on your paper when we get started. I'm gonna let my dog in real quick and then we'll we'll get started. Unless there's any questions, you got questions, make sure you guys are putting those in the comments, please. Yes, Zara, the attendance quiz is one question that asks if you attended class all this week. <laughs> so uh, the answer should be yes, right? So you would log on on Friday, you would take the attendance quiz, and I'm hoping that you guys are being honest and watching these videos at home. And uh, if you can do it, again, if you can't do it at the time at 2 o'clock, like some of you guys obviously can't do it right now because there's not a, everybody's logged on, but... <coughs> excuse me, if you can't, then you do it um, whenever you can, right? Do it at two in the morning if you want, three in the morning, four in the morning, I don't care. You know, just uh, probably a good idea to be taking notes while we're doing this and going through the PowerPoints as well. All right. Okay, so first question, right? Here's the answer, okay? Is correctly draw, correctly labeled graph on the short run aggregate supply, uh, long run aggregate supply and aggregate demand and show the following. Um, equilibrium output at Y sub one and then equilibrium price level at um, labeled PL sub one. So. PL sub one, we have right here. Y sub one, we have here. This is our output point, right? We're at full employment. We have our long run aggregate supply curve, 
our aggregate supply curve, our guide to man's curve, our real GDP, our price level. Okay, hopefully there's no questions there. That one's pretty simple, right? I think everybody should have gotten that one. All right, next question is, assume that there is an increase in exports from Anderson land, right? On your graph in part A, show the effects of higher exports on equilibrium in the short run and then labeling the new one equilibrium Y sub two and P L sub two respectively. Okay, so if exports increase, right? That means that we're sending more goods out of the country, right? And that's going to uh, increase our GDP, right? It's also going to shift our aggregate demand curve to the right, right? Because remember that our aggregate demand curve shifts from, uh, from C plus I plus uh, G plus XN. So we would see So we'd see this occur, right? We would shift our aggregate demand curve to the to the right, and that's labeled here. Do it a little bit closer. That's what's clear, right? So we have AD1, AD2. This is our shift. Here's our new equilibrium point, which is a uh, uh, a positive output gap. Price levels have increased. Output has increased, right? And then those are respectively labeled, right? Y sub two, PL sub two. Okay. Now, um, based on your answer in part B, what impact on higher exports on real wages in the short run explain? So, um, so real wages will fall because price levels have uh, increased and nominal wages are fixed in the short run, right? So we're operating in the short run. so. Since those again are fixed and being sticky, they would stay, um, they would not adjust, okay? Now, um, the next question is as a result of, um, as a result of uh, increase in exports, um, export orientated industries in Anderson land ex increase expenditures on new container ships and equipment, right? So what uh, component of aggregate demand would change? So what is going to change with aggregate demand if um, businesses or exporting businesses uh, start buying new equipment? Well, what's going to happen is that aggregate demand is going to shift to the right because that's an increase in investment, right? And remember, whenever we talk about an increase in investment, we're also talking about capital stocks. So if we increase our capital stock, it means we're able to produce more things. So what's going to happen to our long-run aggregate supply curve? Our long-run aggregate supply curve is also going to shift to the right, okay? Um, and so is there any, any questions on that, um, on that explanation there? No? Okay. And so that is it for it today. Um, unless you guys have any other questions or comments or anything that you guys want to want me to cover real quick. Um, but like I said, I really appreciate you guys. Um, please stay safe. Make sure you guys are staying at home. Try not to, uh, try not to hang out with anybody. Try to, you know, wash your, make sure you guys are washing your hands all the time. Um, you know, and again, if you have uh, uh, questions or anything, please, uh, please email me. Okay. All right. Talk to you guys uh, or see you guys soon. Peace.